Like the SN2 mechanism, the SN1 mechanism also has a, st a series of steps that you should always follow when you're drawing the mechanism. The SN1 mechanism has quite a bit more steps than the SN2. So let's just start and go over all of those steps. The very first thing that we should do when we are attempting to draw an SN1 mechanism is verify that our molecule is actually capable of doing SN1. Remember for SN1, the restriction here is that we are trying to form a carbocation by causing that leaving group to just spontaneously fall off the molecule. So we want to verify that the carbon atom that holds the leaving group is capable of forming a carbocation. We want to make sure that the carbon that has the leaving group is either a secondary carbon or a tertiary carbon. And that means that it has one or zero hydrogens attached to it. So if it has two or three hydrogens attached, it's not going to do SN1. The molecule is not going to do SN1 at all. For this particular molecule, the hydrogen, the carbon in question has only one hydrogen attached, which means that this molecule is capable of doing SN1. If you watched the last video, you probably saw that I used this exact same reaction, or, or excuse me, the exact same molecule to demonstrate the SN2 mechanism. And that is not some sort of mistake. There are quite a few molecules that are capable of doing either SN1 or SN2. So once we have confirmed that the molecule is good, then just like with the SN2 reaction, the second thing that we need to do is double check our leaving group and make sure that we have a good leaving group. If we do not have a good leaving group, for example, if the leaving group is hydroxide, OH, in this, in this exact case, or in the last video we saw also NH2, which is a bad leaving group, then we will protonate it with some sort of acid. And this is exactly the same as the SN2 mechanism. So when we are starting with a bad leaving group, the very first step is to protonate or add an H plus ion to that leaving group with an acid. The oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons on it, and those lone pair of electrons are gonna be used to grab one of the hydrogens from the acid and spit that um, chlor chlorine out. And that converts our bad leaving group into water, which is a really good leaving group. Remember to be a good leaving group, it has to be something that is stable when it leaves the molecule. So uh, here we have our molecule now with a good leaving group. Then now the mechanism is gonna to start to differ from the SN2 mechanism. So the next thing that happens is that the leaving group leaves and this causes a carbocation The bond between the carbon atom and the leaving group will break. The electrons in that bond go on to the oxygen in this case, whatever atom is directly attached, goes on to the oxygen as a lone pair. And so we do still have that hydrogen. I'm going to kind of re-angle this hydrogen. I'm going to draw it this way now just because it looks prettier. And we have a positive charge on the carbon that used to hold that leaving group. And we also have that water molecule that has fallen off. And we have the chloride ion. I haven't drawn that yet. We have the chloride ion as well that came off of the HCl. So here we have our SN1 intermediate, the carbocation. And anytime, no matter what you're doing, anytime you have a carbocation, we always want to evaluate and attempt to rearrange that carbocation. If it is a tertiary carbocation, which is the most stable type of carbocation, there will be no rearrangement. But if it is a secondary carbocation, it is going to attempt to rearrange. 
So let's practice rearranging um, to, to undergo some sort of rearrangement. We're going to first identify the C plus carbon, and then we have to also identify the carbon atoms that are directly attached, because remember, rearrangement can only take place between carbon atoms that are directly attached. So we want to see if we can trade this positive charge for anything on either one of the attached carbons that would create a better, more stable carbocation. If we were to take this positive charge and move it out onto this carbon, this would be a primary carbocation, which is not good. That is less stable than what we're starting with, which is secondary. So if we were to take that positive charge and move it over onto this carbon, trade something with this carbon, that would give us a tertiary carbon, which is good. So that is exactly where we want that positive charge to go. So now we have to ask ourselves, what's on this carbon that is tradable? This carbon has one hydrogen, and the hydrogens are the easiest thing to swap in a carbocation rearrangement. So we'll go ahead and shift that, that carbon, or excuse me, the hydrogen. And now we have two hydrogens on that carbon, and the positive charge has shifted, traded, and we now have a tertiary carbocation, which is a much more stable molecule. You're not always going to be able to rearrange, but whenever you can, you do. Once the carbocation has been rearranged, or if the carbocation cannot be arranged, then we are going to attack the carbocation with the nucleophile. So typically, that is going to be the negatively charged thing that you have present. That's the one that's the most motivated to react. And so let's see what that gets us. That attack creates a bond between the carbon and the chlorine. So there it is, and I'll continue drawing those two hydrogens so nobody gets confused. And that is the product of this reaction. So let's practice with a few more molecules. Here is our next set. These are three more reactions that we're going to do. First thing that we have to do is make sure that the carbon holding the leaving group has no more than one hydrogen attached. It can have one hydrogen or no hydrogens, but no more than that, secondary or tertiary only. Next thing that we have to do is evaluate our leaving group. This is an NH2, which is not a good leaving group, a NH2 and an OH- are both bad leaving groups, so we're going to take our acid and we are going to protonate that nitrogen with the acid and that will give us a much better leaving group, NH3+. Now that our leaving group is good, we are going to kick the leaving group off of the molecule break the carbon-nitrogen bond. The electrons from the carbon-nitrogen bond go on to the nitrogen as a lone pair. So that makes ammonia. And we now have a positive charge on the carbon that used to hold the leaving group. We need to evaluate this carbocation. Is it good enough? This carbocation is secondary, which means we want to see if we can turn it into tertiary. So here's our carbocation, and these are the two carbons that are eligible for swapping and stabilizing the molecule. If we move the positive charge up onto this carbon atom, so if it's up here, that would be a tertiary carbocation, so that would be ideal. There's a hydrogen on that carbon that is movable. And so if we do that, then we will get this carbocation right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw both of the hydrogens so that nobody gets confused about where the hydrogens have gone. So this is a tertiary carbocation, which is great. And oh, I, again, I forgot to draw the chloride ion that we lost. I'll draw it over here. So now our last step is to take that nucleophile and attack 
the carbocation and I'm kind of running out of room of where to draw this so we now are forming a carbon chlorine bond those hydrogens are still there there is the product of this reaction let's look at our next example actually I'm going to do this last example first because I think that this one right here might take up a lot of space so for our next example first thing that we have to do analyze the alkyl halide make sure that it's capable of SN1 look at the carbon that's holding the leaving group it should have one or zero hydrogens it has zero so it's definitely capable of SN1 next thing we have to do analyze the leaving group it's a chloride that's a great leaving group so this molecule is already ready to react break the carbon chlorine bond because the first thing we have to do is get rid of that leaving group which is going to give us this and this time i'm not forgetting to draw the chloride after it falls off the molecule now we analyze this carbocation this is a tertiary carbocation which means it is as stable as it, as possible so we don't have to rearrange anything last step we attack that c plus with a nucleophile and there we go you might be saying wait a minute why didn't she attack with the chloride well remember that's not the definition of a leaving group a leaving group shouldn't try to put itself back on a molecule so you're going to not be attacking with your leaving group okay so now let's tackle this last example First thing we have to do, analyze the molecule, look at the carbon that's holding the leaving group, make sure that it has one or zero hydrogens. This has zero hydrogens, so it's good to go. Next, analyze the leaving group. The leaving group is a bromine, so it is also good and it is ready to go. So now we will get rid of that leaving group. and form a carbocation and we have our bromide leaving group hanging out now we want to analyze our carbocation this carbocation is tertiary which means it is as stable as it can possibly be so it will not attempt to rearrange and now we are ready to attack with the nucleophile but what's the nucleophile in this case this is the first time that we are attacking with a neutral molecule because i just told you you're not going to try to put that bromine back on just like we're not going to try to put the chlorine back on that's not how leaving groups work so we're attacking with this molecule over here which has no charge it's neutral so what exactly is doing the attacking well, this molecule has an oxygen and the oxygen have lone pairs of electrons and the that the lone pairs of electrons are nucleophilic so one of those lone pairs of electrons is going to be the thing that does the attacking and forms the bond to our positively charged carbon so we're going to get something that looks like this now when we do that when we form that bond between the oxygen and the carbon this bond right here and we're using one of oxygen's lone pairs to form that bond our oxygen now has three bonds and one lone pair which gives it a positive formal charge this in itself is not stable this is not a product of a reaction it's not it's not going to stop just leave you with a positively charged oxygen what happens when you end with a positively charged molecule, then we are going to see a second nucleophile come in. So we're going to bring in a second CH3OH, and that substance is going to deprotonate to eliminate the positive charge on in this case on the oxygen so the a lone pair of electrons on a second version of the nucleophile the same lone pair that attacked our positively charged carbon on molecule number two that lone pair is going to attack a hydrogen that is on the oxygen in this case or whatever atom is bearing the positive formal charge it's going to grab that hydrogen and allow the oxygen hydrogen bond to break 
so that in that way the oxygen is going to get rid of one of its bonds because it has too many and those electrons are going to move on to the oxygen as a lone pair. All of this is going to cause the formal charge to go away. So let's draw what this looks like. We now have an O, CH3, no hydrogen on that oxygen, two lone pairs on that oxygen. There's the product of our reaction. This is a stable molecule. And we have also made this CH3, O, H, H plus. This is one of the side products of the reaction, a byproduct, something that we will throw away in the waste container. So let's go back to our steps and let's add this weird SN1 situation. Let's add that to our steps. If this case that we just saw happens when the nucleophile is charge neutral, So let's look at our examples and kind of see what that means. Here, when we attacked, our nucleophile was negatively charged and we ended up with a good molecule. Here, when we attacked again, the nucleophile was negatively charged and we ended with a good molecule. Here, when we attacked again, negatively charged nucleophile ended good. Here, when we attacked, we attacked with a neutral molecule, not charged. And that caused us to end up with a temporary charged product that we had to deprotonate. So if the nucleophile is charge neutral, the product will be charged. And the charge of the product will be a plus one. And in that case, we will need to deprotonate our product using a second nu nucleophile to get rid of that positive charge.